Hello and welcome to Football Daily, where today we're looking at 10 of the most brutal and violent football matches of all time. 10. Netherlands 0, Portugal 1 The first of two appearances apiece for Portugal and the Netherlands, this game took place in the second round of the 2006 World Cup. The two sides boasted talent like Figo, Robin, Deco and Ronaldo, but had little interest in a contest of skill, instead settling for kicking the shit out of each other. Mark van Bommel was in the book inside of two minutes, while Khalid Boularouz left an early marker on Cristiano Ronaldo to pick up a yellow of his own. Manish put Portugal ahead in the first half with a wonderful strike, dancing through the defence before smashing home, but it was quickly overshadowed by indiscipline on both sides. The ref ended up dishing out 16 yellow cards and four reds, and could have sent Luis Figo off too, after the Ballon d'Or winner nutted Van Pommel. After the game, Portugal coach Luis Felipe Scolari said, Jesus Christ may be able to turn the other cheek, but Luis Figo isn't Jesus Christ. 9. Athletic Bilbao 1, Barcelona 0 The 1984 Copa del Rey final was primed for fireworks. Barcelona were to face Athletic Club de Bilbao in what would be Diego Maradona's final game for the Blaugrana before he joined Napoli there was already bad blood between the sides. A year earlier, Bilbao centre-back Andoni Goicochea had broken Maradona's ankle at the Camp Nou, sliding through the Argentinian from behind. El Diego said his ankle made a noise like wood-breaking, while the press dubbed Goicochea the Butcher of Bilbao. Goicochea seemed to have no regrets. He kept the boot he used to injure Maradona in a glass case in his house and after Athletic triumphed 1-0 in the Copa del Rey final to complete a domestic double, he was a key player in the enormous fight that followed, kicking Maradona again, this time square in the chest. He was handed an 18-game suspension, but only served seven. 8. Lebanon vs Kuwait Most matches are soundtracked by singing, clapping and chanting from the crowd, but this 2011 international friendly between Lebanon and Kuwait had a slightly different score the sound of gunfire. The result was hardly in doubt, with visitors Kuwait leading 6-0 late in the second half, but an argument sprang up on the pitch, with racial abuse apparently exchanged by players. Before long, security guards had to run onto the pitch as a fist fight broke out. One guard was knocked to the ground, and another decided to take drastic action, firing several shots into the air. Unsurprisingly, that did the job, with the two teams quickly separating and heading to their changing rooms. No one was seriously injured, and FIFA avoided handing out punishments by claiming they hadn't received a report on the game. 7. The 2010 World Cup Final Before the 2010 tournament decider, the record for most cards in a World Cup Final was 6, but Spain and the Netherlands obliterated that mark, with a combined 47 fouls earning 14 yellows and 1 red, as La Roja ran out 1-0 winners in extra time. Knowing they lacked the technical prowess to compete with a midfield of Busquets, Iniesta, Alonso and Xavi, the Dutch resolved to disrupt the tiki-taka style of the Spanish with some expert fouling. Nigel de Jong and Mark van Bommel battered their opposite numbers, with van Bommel committing five fouls and de Jong karate-kicking Xavi Alonso in the thorax. However, it was Johnny Heitinger who was sent for an early shower after he pulled down Iniesta as the Barca attacker raced through on goal. Down to ten and with seven of those players booked, the Netherlands had lost their cool and another World Cup final. 6. Graham Souness on the Rampage Graham Souness was considered a player ahead of his time, a tough tackler who nonetheless ran the midfield with intelligence and class. But when he arrived at Rangers in 1986, fresh from two years at Sampdoria, he was reintroduced to British football the hard way. Souness was appointed player manager and so was expected to set an example on the pitch, and boy did he. His debut came against Hibernian, and despite an early booking, his quality was clear, with a lovely shimmy giving him room to run through the middle. Hibernian winger Stuart Beedy recklessly barged Souness to the ground, and the Scot absolutely lost it. He jumped up, leaping into a challenge before grinding his studs down his opponent's leg. Revenge must have felt good, until he realised he'd got the wrong man, leaving the innocent George McCluskey in need of nine stitches. Souness was given his marching orders and left the field as the remaining 21 players enjoyed a nice big punch-up. 5. Uruguay vs Scotland Despite their proud footballing history, with two World Cups and a record 15 Coppers America, Uruguay have often given in to their worst instincts at tournaments, with the 1986 World Cup showcasing a particularly violent side. Though they drew 1-1 with West Germany and lost 6-1 to Denmark, 
Uruguay went into the final match of the group stage with a chance of making it to the second round. Their opponents were Scotland, coached by Alex Ferguson, who needed a win to go through, and Uruguay were determined to stop them playing to their strengths. Under a minute in, Jose Batista was sent off, after a dirty tackle saw Gordon Strachan on the turf clutching his ankle, and over the following 90 minutes, every elbow was thrown and every shin kicked. The game ended 0-0 and Uruguay went through, Scotland went home. FIFA later fined La Celeste £9,000 for their behaviour. 4. Racing Club 1, Celtic 0 Before the Club World Cup, there was the Intercontinental Cup, which saw the European Cup and Copa Libertadores winners face off. In 1967, that meant Celtic faced Argentina's Racing Club. The Hoops won the first leg in Scotland and Racing triumphed in the second in Buenos Aires, though the atmosphere was soured when the Celtic keeper was hit in the head with a rock thrown from the stands. A decider was arranged in Uruguay and the match turned into a carnival of brutality. After 20 minutes, the ref stopped the game to calm the players down, but it made absolutely no difference, with both teams reduced to 10 men before half-time. Bobby Lennox, the red-carded Celtic man, was taken off the field by a policeman armed with a sword. After the break, Rassing had another man dismissed while the boys saw three more red cards. That would have left them with seven men, but Bertie Old simply refused to leave the pitch and played the last few minutes as Rassing won 1-0. In all, 51 fouls were given in the game, though apparently the ref missed dozens more. Three. The Battle of Santiago By the time the Italian team arrived in Chile for the 1962 World Cup, the whole country already hated them. Italian journalists had called Santiago backwards and miserable, with entire neighbourhoods given over to open prostitution, while the Chilean press retaliated with accusations of drug addiction and fascism among the Italian players. So when Chile played Italy at the group stage, tensions were running high. It took 12 seconds for the first foul and 12 minutes for the first red card, with Italy's Giorgio Farini removed by police when he refused to leave the field. Chilean players threw punches on three occasions, with Leonel Sanchez breaking Humberto Maschio's nose, but they all escaped dismissal, while Italian Mario David was ejected when he booted someone in the head. Down to nine men, the Azzurri lost 2-0 and when the highlights were shown on British television a few days later, commentator David Coleman called it the most stupid, appalling, disgusting and disgraceful exhibition of football possibly in the history of the game. 2. Portugal 5, Angola 1 Angola is a former Portuguese colony, only receiving its independence from the Europeans in 1975. So, when they faced a Portugal side featuring Figo, Pauleta and Paulo Sousa in 2001, they were determined to upset the odds. Angola took the lead in the first minute, but before long the international friendly turned out to be anything but. Yamba Asher was the first sent off after 16 minutes and Portugal levelled from the spot. After half an hour, the Africans were down to eight, while the Seleção made their advantage count, adding two more goals before the interval. Fans pulled their seats apart and threw them onto the pitch in frustration, and in the end, the game was abandoned in the 67th minute, when Angola's Helve Vicente was injured. Now 5-1 down with just seven men on the pitch and all their subs used up, the underdogs were forced to forfeit. Probably for the best. 1. The Battle of Highbury In 1934, Italy had won the World Cup on home soil, much to the delight of fascist dictator Benito Mussolini. However, there was one question mark over their victory. England were in a standoff with FIFA and had refused to go to the tournament, so a friendly was set up between the new world champions and the three Lions to settle which team was best. The game took place at Arsenal's ground with seven Gunners players in the lineup, and Mussolini was desperate for an Italian win promising his players an Alfa Romeo and £150 each, the equivalent of six grand today, if they emerged victorious. A frantic start saw England miss a penalty in the first minute, before Italy's Luis Monti had his foot broken in the second. He tried to play on for another 15 minutes before giving up. During that time, England scored three goals, and when Monti finally left the field, the Azzurri were reduced to ten men, as substitutes were not yet permitted. But they responded aggressively, with one England player suffering a broken arm, another a broken nose and the great Ted Drake getting punched. Italy scored twice in the second half and hit the post, but couldn't force an equaliser. The game finished 3-2 to England and the FA considered withdrawing from international football afterwards, thanks to the relentless foul play. So we hope you enjoyed that and if you want to check out more of our videos then click here on screen. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe and get on our Snapchat and our Twitter.